Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Brett Barron's here in the WCIA 3 studios. Andy Olson is in our podcast studio on the other side of the building and we are talking high school sports tonight as the IHSA makes big moves today announcing its timelines for the 20 remaining high school sports and activities for the rest of this school year. And this is big news for so many high schoolers across the state, especially those in phase four regions, which is all of the WCIA 3 viewing area. I mean, they can play high school high contact sports right now and that also includes basketball which is going to get underway here very very shortly andy what was your reaction from today seeing that basketball will start first as soon as today it could start i know we got some schools you talked to tuscola today they're going to play their first games on friday yeah i mean i don't know if i expected coming into today that now we have a game on the schedule to go cover on Friday. It's not like there's anything else going on on Friday, right? And just, you know, the biggest basketball game in a while for the University of Illinois. But having high school sports back on the calendar is just such a refreshing sight to see. Um, I think that there were inklings that this is what was going to happen today with the announcement that this meeting was going to be, you know, specifically about setting the schedule for all of the remaining sports that still need to be played, which is, you know, a good majority of them in the state of Illinois. Uh, so just from the people that I talked to today, there's such a, a great sense of, of excitement about what this season can be. You know, I haven't heard anyone dwelling on the fact that it's not normal that, you know, COVID prevented this season from, you know, uh, being a, a full one. I, I just hear excitement from people who at some points thought this wasn't going to happen. Now knowing that they're going to be able to play sports this season, as long as things stay where they are, and hopefully we're headed in the right direction where they will, there is just so much excitement, and we're going to keep coming back to that word because that's just how people are. They're ecstatic about the possibility of playing sports, and it's really refreshing to see, and I'm happy that it's, it's finally happening. And I know some people are going to be upset, Andy, that there is some overlap with sports. That was going to happen. Nearly all of these sports are a condensed schedule. And I am excited for the spring sports in that sense because after they got their entire season canceled uh, last spring, they will get 10 plus weeks here, about 10 and a half weeks for them to compete and play games. That's the most by far. We've got some other sports that will not even come close to that, just five or six weeks. Uh, high school football is going to get... Uh, essentially seven and a half weeks to compete and play, but only six games. Volleyball looking at about six and a half weeks, wrestling eight and a half, baseball, softball, track and field, like I mentioned, at ten and a half, and basketball will have about six and a half weeks. And I want to go over some of this for people that may have missed the news a little bit earlier today as we bring up this uh, on your screen here so you can get a full look. And I know this is a lot to digest here, but let's start with the winter sports and traditional winter sports. That does include boys basketball and girls basketball. And you can see there on the screen, practice is starting A, ASAP. Now, all of these sports minus football have to compete and practice for 12 or for seven days, excuse me, before they can compete in a game. So seven different days of practice leading up to their first game. Football has to have 12 different days of practice leading up to their first game unless an athlete is already in a winter sport heading into a uh, quote unquote spring sport or football. Then 10 days is all they need into their next season. There is going to be some overlap. Like we mentioned, boys and girls basketball starting now. It goes until March 13th and you see there on your screen football starts March 3rd for the first practice first game March 19th and when you have to have those 10 or 12 days before you can play a game, there is going to be some overlap there and especially with football running all the way until April 24th. You see the that, that's the latest in this for those next round of sports and those traditional spring sports are going to start on April 5th, whether that's baseball, softball, track and field. You've got wrestling starting in there April 19th as well. So there's going to be overlap on every season coming into this, but it's just the way it, it, it had to be in a sense with so many combined seasons into a short amount of time. We're looking at all of this now on here January 27th everything has to be completed by June 19th. And so there's really not a lot of time here to get all of these things in. And they did start it now. And that was a big question coming into today. Would they start basketball right away? We got the clearance last Friday from Governor Pritzker and the IDPH that schools could go ahead and start competing in all sports as long as they're in phase four. And I think that's an important thing to remember here and keep in mind. If schools are not in phase four, they can't compete in these higher risk sports, but that, like I mentioned, does include all of the WCIA three viewing areas. So Andy, as you look at this, what do you take away from basketball starting now and then football getting going here in just about six weeks? 
Well, it's it's definitely a quick turnaround, like you had mentioned. And of course, they have those seven days of practice to kind of get kids, you know, acclimated again. And I, I was talking to uh, uh, Kyle Duvall today from St. Joseph Ogden. Uh, I was there when they found out the news. I I told Kyle because they were in the middle of practice. Uh, they weren't checking their phones to see the update from the IHSA, so I had to let him know the news to tell the rest of the team. Uh, and when I talked with him afterwards, he said, you saw them out there. They, they were sloppy. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of teams may be like that right now because they haven't had a lot of time together to practice. Um, so seven days is going to be important to to that point to get together playing like a team again. I think it's going to be important to kind of ramp things up for these players who may have been sitting around for a little bit. Now, some have done um, so, some sports that aren't affiliated with their high school or they've gone, I know, across the border to Indiana to play some some basketball or, or something like that. And, you know, I think that's going to be super important those days is kind of getting getting them reacclimated to uh, that that sort of schedule and, and football going shortly after the, the basketball season. They're really pushing these things back to back. And of course, there's a little overlap, like you mentioned, but, you know, I'm happy to see that they're not wasting a lot of time because they don't have time to waste. And I uh, like you mentioned already, I am happy to see that um, those spring sports that had their whole season canceled last year get a little bit of extra time and i think that's important for them you know after they weren't able to play at all that they that they get uh maybe a little bit more because they they've gone more than a full year of playing now without playing and it's going to be a sprint to the finish here like we mentioned in yeah. mid-june when this thing is going to wrap up and then we turn the page and hopefully into a quote-unquote normal again schedules for next season with football and volleyball starting in august and you mentioned talking to the saint joe players andy this is all about the players. We want it to be about them first and foremost. And yes, the athletic directors are going to be busy trying to get these games in, scheduling gyms, all this kind of stuff to make sure that these athletes are ready to play. But it is all about the athletes and giving, these, giving them these opportunities. And that's why it was so fun to, to hear from them today. It's pretty crazy. This is what we've been, we've been working for, for since October. And every guy, with, every guy in this gym, we've been trying to put the work in just for this moment and for it to actually happen is great for us. I knew there was a meeting. I just wasn't sure what was going to happen. I knew they were trying to schedule something. It just put that more, that much more meaning into the practice. Like, we're, we're getting ready now. It's, it's exciting. And that certainly is exciting for all of those athletes that get the chance to go out and compete now. And I, I think that's what has me most pumped up, Andy, is just the fact that we are going to get to go and see these athletes perform. And you know that they've been sitting around and waiting for this. And like you mentioned, going to Indiana or Iowa or Wisconsin or wherever that may be to compete and play and the chance to be seen. And, you know, for some of these kids, a chance to maybe get some exposure for college athletes. The other one's just playing for the love of the game. You know, I just keep going back to that, that these athletes are going to get an opportunity, and that just makes me really excited for them. Yeah, you know, we've we've heard from so many of them throughout this. It's almost been a year now, you know, since the pandemic started. Just, you know, hearing their stories about, you know, what they're kind of doing to fill the time. We've, we've been to the practices and the workouts that are socially distanced and have the masks and everything and they're, that are being kept clean. And, you know, every time that we did one of those stories, you, you hear the story from them or you hear them say that, you know, we just hope that we get the chance to play. And there's been so much hope, you know, for these last, like I said, about a year since this thing started that they would eventually get the chance to play. And, you know, we've been we've been asked so many questions since then. Hey, when are high school sports going to get started back up? We never knew the answer, Brett. I don't think either one of us were able to give a straight answer when we were asked that just because we didn't know. And I don't think anyone really knew. So the fact that we get to sit here today and talk about high school sports coming back for those kids that had their hashtags and, and had their marches and went to the Capitol to to fight for their sports to come back. Um, it's just such a it's such a cool thing to see that they finally get to have that moment, especially for the seniors who have been waiting all year. I have a little brother who's a high school senior in Illinois who's been waiting for a shot to play football. I'm ex super excited for him to get that shot. Same with every other kid in the state of Illinois. So just seeing that that hope pay off now is just uh, I think is really rewarding to see. And like we mentioned, Andy, all of these athletic directors and coaches, and some are the same. I think of GCMS athletic director and football coach Mike Allen. They've got a lot on their plate here moving forward. And I know they're really happy to be at this point because, you know, for the last 10 months, it, it's been the unknowns. And yes, there were some fall sports. You know, we saw golf. We saw girls tennis, girls swimming and diving also in there along with cross country. And so they had a little bit 
in there to keep them, you know, going in a sense. But it was all about getting so many of these sports back, not just being, uh, you know, limited to some. When all the other states around Illinois were playing, it was really tough for so many to understand and grasp why Illinois wasn't getting that opportunity. When Indiana plays high school football in the fall, along with Iowa, Missouri, Kentucky. And so you know, I just find it interesting now that we're just going from essentially, let's say, 15 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour because last week's news, um, I should say a couple of weeks news ago, they, they announced that they could start practicing, that there was some more uh, restrictions being lifted. So these teams have been working out now for a little while and, and getting that opportunity. And so when you get last Friday's news that all sports are good to go, that propels something. And then when you get today's news that was expected, and we all knew this board meeting was happening today, but it comes out that basketball is going now and that teams can play now if they meet those seven-day criteria, here we are. I mean, we're ready to play. The release said they could play today if teams met that. Now, the realistic side of that was it's probably not going to happen. But I found it interesting down in Tuscola as well that – uh, Ryan Hornaday is ready to go. He, he's got teams lined up, and I know you talked to them. What was your uh, main takeaway from talking to Ryan today uh, about how quickly they're moving here with a game on Friday for the boys and a game on Saturday for the girls basketball team? I don't know if I have a main takeaway, Brett. I got, I got a lot of takeaways from that conversation. It was really good to sit down with, with Ryan and, and talk over Zoom like we've pretty much all been doing at this point. But uh, he is is going to be working nonstop for a little bit here. Same with a lot of athletic directors around the state of Illinois that, that are in this phase four and are able to start playing. But uh, he was telling me that next season, 21-22, every event for every sport is on the schedule and it has officials hired for those events. For this season, which is happening as we speak, he has two events scheduled and has officials for those ones. So just the difference between usually they're working a year in advance and have all these things ready to now they're kind of making up by the minute. And as they go, just cause they have to, they didn't know that they were going to be able to start scheduling these things before this afternoon. Uh, so clearly athletic directors are out of their comfort zone a little bit, but uh, Ryan is super excited to, to be able to have this opportunity to give these kids a season. Uh, I think I'm, I'm assuming that is across the board for athletic directors that they're super excited uh, to be able to schedule these things for, for their own kids and, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy watching these schedule releases come out, Brad. I, we have, we're going to have content for the next couple of days because it's just going to be more and more schedules coming out. And uh, we're going to have probably content through June, probably, with, with so many games that need to be played. We mentioned you know, how backed up things are going to be. It's going to be nonstop until June, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to get the grind going again. And we've had it a little bit here with Illinois basketball but to get the high school sports back and there's not going to be any state series we should mention that as well for a lot of these sports ihsa executive director craig anderson said today that for these lower risk sports it's still tbd but he said it's not likely that they will get a chance to compete at state i don't know if that surprises a lot of people in that sense most almost everyone i talked to said let's just play you know let's, let's not try and worry about winning a state title let's just get out there and play and enjoy ourselves and here was some more of your conversation, Andy, uh, with Ryan Hornaday about just playing right away. Shoot off a couple of text messages, sent out some emails. Um, and next thing you know, Arthur says, hey, uh, we can play. We had actually hoped to play tomorrow night. Uh, way back on the original schedule, we were supposed to have a girls game tomorrow night. So I already had a crew lined up. I told, got those guys, hey, if I can find an opponent, can you still come? And they're like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're chomping at the bit. They want to. They want to get in and officiate games. So Arthur said they could come tomorrow night, The crew, or excuse me, Friday night. Uh, the crew that was supposed to come tomorrow night, they're going to come Friday night uh, and then trade messages with uh, Noreen. Uh, she's a good old friend, and uh, a lot of our kids uh, know each other well, being neighboring communities. Uh, so to be able to work out a girls game Saturday as well, uh, it's just great. So now I'm in the process of uh, making sure Somebody can be there to do the book and the clock and announce uh, and just everything is just kind of rolling crazy and fast now. And we're going to roll all the way through June 19th. Like you mentioned, Andy, I think all the ADs, coaches, players even strapping up here because you got so many players who participated in multiple sports and they're just going to go from one to the other here and hope that we go along the way that not a ton of schools or athletes will be affected by COVID-19 and have to 
pause or cancel games. That is going to happen. The IHSA is not testing for COVID-19 or asking any of their athletes to do that. And so there's going to be some uh, pauses. There's going to be some times where teams aren't going to be able to play or start late or have to end early. And that's just the way it is. We'll, you know, we'll navigate through this as we go and do the best that we can. And that's what the states around us have been doing all along as well. It's not a perfect system. Yes, every school and team would love to be able to play a, a whole season and have a state series, but that's not realistic in this. And so we'll take the best of what we can and move forward and try and play you know, as much as we can. I think that's a big sentiment. And that's what Mike Allen uh, told me a little bit earlier today, that they're just going to enjoy every step of the way. We're excited just to finally have answers to to know um, when we're going to be able to play, how long we're going to be able to play and, and just the parameters of and the guidelines that we have put in place. Now we have waited all year for this. I'm exciting to be back. You know, uh, we opened the weight room up Monday for the first time in a long time, and it was exciting to be in there with the guys and, and get back at it again. We'll line up, be ready to practice, be ready to play. Um, we know it's going to be uh, could change any time, any day, but we're going to make the most of the time we do get, and we're going to control what we can control, and uh, we're going to have fun. That's what I love the most, Andy. He said we're going to have fun with it, and I don't know how you can't have fun after sitting on the sidelines for 10 months for so many of these athletes. Yeah, let's all have fun with it. Now, I want to go back to what Ryan said. He's looking for people to do the book. He may have more volunteers uh, of people to do the book <laughs> than he's ever had in the past, just for people that want to go in and get the chance to see a game. But yeah, let's let's have some fun. I know I'm going to have some fun going to the games. And uh, when I was working in news last year, I guess I guess it's not last year. I guess it's 2019 when I was helping you out with uh, Full Court Friday and uh, Friday Football Frenzy, uh, getting to go to those games and to see the people and uh, see the athletes performing, it's such it's such a good time. And I know it's not exactly going to be the same. The environment won't really be there, um, but there's still going to be an energy to it. I mentioned it earlier that energy and excitement are going to be words that we're going to keep saying just because that's how the, the kids are playing. I mean, they haven't played in so long. So um, getting to go see that, it's going to be fun, and, and getting to share those stories I think is going to be uh, really fun as well because I, I think we know now more than ever we're going to be that, that – uh, that place in the middle where, where people are going to be able to see these, the, these players play and, and these teams compete. Yeah. Let's fire it up. Full court Friday about to get started and you know, we'll roll out all the highlights just like we always do COVID-19 style and social distancing and athletes going to have to wear masks. And maybe we should have mentioned that a little bit earlier, Andy, but the mm -hmm. IHSA confirmed once again today that all athletes are going to have to wear a mask while playing except for boys swimming and gymnastics, which there's no high school, uh, teams around here that's uh, that have gymnastics and so it's mainly just going to be boys swimming and diving that you don't have to wear a mask but that means in wrestling that means in basketball and you mentioned a good point with people signing up to do the book or run the clock a 50 fan limit is the IADPH guidance for this and so that doesn't include the players that doesn't include the game personnel in that 50 person limit or 50 fan limit and they're working on some guidance on whether that includes media or not or game personnel, you know, the ADs and all coaches and all of that. But 50 fans is going to be tough for some schools that normally pack, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand people into a, a high school basketball game, sometimes even more on Friday nights. And so that's going to be a lot different, but it is a sign of the times and where we're at and they're playing. And I know a lot of these schools are going to be broadcasting the games online as well for, you know, other family members or fans to see. So. I think we hit most of the details there, Andy, once again, and I wanted to show this graphic just for everyone to see on the regions. So we are in phase four in most of the state. You know, you can see there from Rockford all the way down to Cairo, uh, Danville, over to the Quad Cities. Most of all of this is in phase four. And to be in phase four, you have to, or, or you have to be in phase four, rather, to play high contact sports like football, basketball, and wrestling. Tier one is up in Chicagoland right now. And they can play low and medium risk sports, but they can't play high risk sports. So basketball is going to be shut out for right now in Chicago and the metro suburban area. They are allowed to have intra squad scrimmages, but no competitions yet. And then down in the metro east there in tier two regions right now, and this is as of today, those areas cannot have any medium or high risk uh, sports at all competing. 
And so they are low risk sports only, and they've got a little w more ways to go here with their COVID-19 numbers before they can get started here with any competition. So we got to keep this in mind and, and remind everyone for these kids to mask up and social distance and do our part and make sure everyone is doing their part to stay healthy and not pass uh, or transmit this virus to anyone else. So that way these kids can have this opportunity because if we go out of phase four in the state, they're going to shut this down or, or at least limit and restrict sports a lot more than they are now. And that could cost these teams as well from having a season. So uh, Andy, final thoughts here as we wrap up on a pretty good day. I think for most people, yes, it's not perfect. Yes, you can have some gripes. Yes, there's some things here that I'm sure everyone would like to do differently. But from where we were last Friday morning to not thinking we were going to have any high risk sports at all to where we are today, you know, just five days later, essentially, I feel really good about the direction of high school sports here in Illinois the rest of the school year. Yeah, and I want to say first that, Brett, you need to feel a little bit more confident in your amateur sketch abilities. I don't know if you did, <laughs> you, you made that one, but if anyone hasn't seen Brett's amateur sketch, uh, yeah. it's pretty much that same graphic, but I would say better. But, I mean, you, you mentioned it. The last time that the IHSA had a meeting two weeks ago, uh, we thought that they were just kicking the can down the road again. It's like, when is a decision actually going to come? And to, to be here two weeks later, 14 days, and, and talking about how we could have a high school basketball game to cover two days from now is just completely opposite ends of the spectrum. And I'm so thankful for the fact that we are able to talk about it. Uh, you know, I, I know, like, like we mentioned, that everyone's going to have their own thoughts and, and their own opinions about how this should have been carried out or how it is still being carried out. But all that stuff doesn't matter. What does matter is that the kids are going to get a chance to play, which is the most important thing out of all of this. It doesn't matter how long it's going to be. If the kids say, we just want to play any number of games, just let us play. It doesn't matter for how long or for how many games. I think that's the most important thing, and I'm happy for them to get that chance, Brett. Absolutely. Echo those sentiments 100%. My amateur sketch was on Twitter. It was not very good. <laughs> I had our graphics department make that last graphic way better. Maybe I'll just have them do it from now on and, and not to put out any amateur sketches. Give yourself uh, more credit, Brett. No, it was it was bad, but it's all good. <laughs> a good day for high school sports all around. Uh, and like I mentioned, it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to wade through this and continue on and do the best we can to cover it from now and starting Friday with the first game. Even tomorrow we'll have more coverage. Andy, you're heading out to Urbana. I don't know if you know that yet, but you're going to Urbana to talk to the Tigers who are coming off back-to-back uh, -back regionals. Seems like forever ago we had a high school sporting event and a game, but here we are ready to cover them again and we'll be all over the coverage, including Illinois. That's coming up Friday night. Like you mentioned, Iowa, Illinois should be a great time. Things are looking up, Andy. Appreciate it. For Andy, I'm Brett. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a great night.